Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about the 21 initial consonants that appear in Mandarin Chinese. Um, these are essential to be able to master if you want to be able to pronounce Chinese well, um, because almost every single syllable in Chinese is going to use a consonant, um, and all these are used almost equally frequently, and it's very important to be able to pronounce them in the proper way in order to make your uh, the words that you say sound genuine. Okay, so a lot of these are pretty similar to the ones in English, but there are a few that are possibly not intuitive by the letter that's used in Pinyin, or is just basically a sound that is not super typically used in English. So I'm going to go through these first, saying all of them uh, in just a complete list and then I'm gonna say them one by one where you can repeat them and then we're gonna break it down a little bit and see exactly what's going on when we say each of these consonants okay so I'm gonna just read them and point to them as I go this is po, po, mo, fo, du, tu, no, lo, ge, ke, he, ji, qi, xi, zhi, Chi, shi, ri, zi, zi, zi. Okay. One thing to note though, when I say these, I'm not saying exactly the sound that each of the letters represents, but rather I am saying the name of the letter. Just like in English, like when we want to say F, for instance, we say F, not F, even though F is the sound that it kind of it represents. So the names are different than the sounds, but at least in Chinese, the initial consonant of each of the names is the sound of the letter. So for instance, when I'm saying h, the sound that's representing is h. And for instance, when I say qi, the sound that's representing is ch. Okay? So, and we just say a little more, we say more than just the sound in the name, because it's a little easier to hear the sound when we kind of add some vowels in it. but so the, that's basically what I'm saying here. As long as you know the names, you will know the associated sounds. Just take the first part of it, okay? So I'm going to say these one by one now with a little bit of time so that you can repeat them. Um, and just do the best you can. We'll go through this a little bit in more detail to see exactly what the consonants are. Okay, so I'm going to go through them. Bo, po, mo, fo, du, Ho, no, lo, go, ko, ho, ji, chi, si, zhi, chi, shi, ri, zi. Okay, so those are all 21 of the consonants. Now let's go into a little bit more detail into exactly what we're seeing when we're saying each of these. The first row, let me just say them again. Bo, po, mo, fo. Okay, the first three of them, specifically the bo, the po, and the mo, these three use the mouth with both lips together at the front at some point in the articulation of the sound. Okay, so for that reason we say that they are bilabial. Okay, meaning specifically we're using both lips when we're articulating the sound bilabial. Okay, the fo is a little bit different in that we're using the bottom lip and the upper teeth. Fo Okay, so in this case we don't call it bilabial, we instead call it labiodental. And these terms bilabial and labiodental refer to the location of the articulation in the mouth for each of the consonants. Po, po, and mo are all bilabial, but fo is labiodental. Okay, po, po, and mo are of course different sounds even though they kind of occur at the same spot so there's something more that's distinguishing them specifically for bo and po 
They're very similar and they're both actually articulated in the same manner. So I'm going to put a box around them. And they're articulated in a manner that's called plausive. And what plausive means is that you're building up air on the inside of your mouth with the lips closed, which is the bilabial part. And you're letting air build up here and then you're releasing it quickly. So bo, when you say bo, you let air come through in your mouth and then you release it by opening both of the lips. Bo. And then po, it's the same thing. Po. But the difference between these two, even though they're both bilabial plausives, is that we're doing something with the P, the po, that we're not doing with the B, which is something called aspiration. And when we say that po is aspirated and compared to po, what we mean is that we're kind of forcefully letting the air out in this one. So it's a little bit more emphasized than the po is. Okay, so po, po, very similar, both bilabial plausives, but specifically in unaspirated and aspirated versions. Okay, mo is a little bit different in this case. This is what's called nasal, and what we're doing is we're closing the entire mouth and letting a little bit of air come out of the nose. Mo, just before we open the mouth, there so actually is a little bit of air that does go out the nose, and that's what creates the nasal sound. Same thing here with no. This is a little bit of a different location of articulation, but both of these, in fact, are nasal. So I'm going to put a box around these two. Okay, and this is nasal. The fo is a little bit different because. Again, we're doing labiodental, which is a slightly different location of articulation, that's specifically between the bottom lip and the top teeth. And we're doing something called a fricative articulation. So I'm going to put a circle around this one. Fricative. Here the sound is actually being made, being made by the air passing through the space we're making between the lips and the teeth. And the friction of the air is actually what's creating the sound. So fricative meaning that it's being forced out and the actual the friction of the air being pushed through such a small space is what's creating the sound. Okay, and in fact fricative actually appears a bunch. Um, in fact the h, the xi, the shi, the ri, and the si are all fricative. So I'm just gonna put circles around that just to be consistent with that. Okay, but that's the, that's essentially the how the first row goes. Okay, the next row, I'm just gonna put squares around these just so we have bilabial and labial dental, just so we can see that. In the second row, we have what are called the alveolar consonants. All four of these are alveolar. Alveolar. Um, put a box around that one. And what that means is if you look inside your mouth, these are the lips. These are the teeth. Just behind the teeth, this is the alveolar ridge. Alveolar ridge. And when the, when the tongue comes in contact with the alveolar ridge, we get the alveolar consonants. Specifically, we get two plausive ones, just like po and po, but we're just letting the air build up and come out at the region that's the tongue with the alveolar ridge. And this makes du and t. And once again, we have unaspirated and aspirated versions. Here we have a nasal, which means that we have complete cutoff of airflow because of the tongue at the alveolar ridge. And we're letting a little bit of air come out of the nose. So we get n. Over here we have l, which is a little different than the other ones in that it's a mode that's uh, what we call lateral, meaning that the tongue goes up to the alveolar ridge, but the air actually flows to the outsides of the tongue. Okay. Um, slightly different than any of the other modes that we see in this chart, but that's why we put a slightly different shape around that one. Um, but it's still alveolar. You still have the tongue in contact with the alveolar ridge. So once again, going through these sounds, do, t, n, l, you know, with the plausives unaspirated, plausive aspirated, nasal, and then lateral. Okay. And there's a review of the first row, bo, po, mo, fo, and that we have plausive unaspirated, plausive aspirated, nasal, and then fricative. First three being bilabial, and the last one being labiodental. Okay, with the next row, this is called the velar row, and again we have a pair of plausives and then a fricative. This is velar. And this specifically corresponds to the soft palate in the mouth. 
The palate is the region behind the alveolar ridge on the roof of the mouth. Divided into two seconds, we have the two two sections, sorry, the hard palate. Hard palate. And then we have the soft palate. The tongue can lift up all the way back to the soft palate, and then you get all of the velar consonants. Again, we have plausives, so we're letting air build up in the back and then releasing. G, k, again with an unaspirated and an aspirated version, and then with h, we're closing off the airflow a little bit so that the air going through makes a sound just by the friction. Okay, so just like b, p, f, we have g, k, h, just in the part that's more back in the mouth. Okay, that's it for the plausives. So I'm going to put a line here. And then we actually find that we get more pairs in these sections here. Um, and these are called affricates. Let me just write that here, affricates. And these are kind of the weird cousins of the fricatives. Affricates, they start as a stop. So kind of like in the plazas when we start out with kind of building up air, that's what I mean by a stop. That we're kind of blocking the airflow entirely. And then with um, and then with the Africans, what happens is that they end as a, as a fricative. End as a fricative. Okay, so for instance, uh, in the ji chi shi ro, we are working with what are called alveolopalatal consonants. Alveolopalatal. Which means that they're kind of not quite alveolar, they're kind of not quite palatal in the pa hard palate region, they're kind of in between. This is alveolopalatal. And then in here, when we kind of build up the air and then release it, we get G and then Qi, which is the aspirated version of ji, and then when we make friction, we get shi. Okay, so affricate unaspirated ji, affricate aspirated shi, and then fricative shi, all in the alveolopalatal region. Okay, using the tongue to kind of force the air into that region. And then the next row, we have what's called retroflex. And here, what we're doing is we're curling the tongue back a bit to make. So again, we're building up the air and releasing it like a fricative, and then aspirating it, and then maybe just plainly as a fricative, or okay. Both of these are fricatives and both of these are retroflex, but the difference between shu and ru is that ru is voiced. So just like we had different variations when we had unaspirated and aspirated, we have kind of a voiced version of shu, in that we're using our vocal cords more so in this case to create the ru as opposed to shu, even though they're both retroflex and even though that they're both um, they're both fricatives. So that's just kind of how we're distinguishing those two. Um, let me just say this again: ji, qi, xi, zhi, shi, shi, ru going from alveolopalatal to kind of curling back into the retroflex. And then for the last row, we have another alveolar row. Alveolar once again. But we're not really getting any doubles because over here in the alveolar, we didn't have any fricatives, so here's our fricative. And then the plazas are now being replaced by affricates. So we have enough kind of uh, linguistic room in order to add new consonants into the alveolars. Okay. So once again in the alveolar, which is uh, again at this ridge, the alveolar ridge using the tongue, we get two affricates. The one is the unaspirated z, and then the aspirated s, and then we get the fricative s. So again with all of these, since we have affricates that start as a stop and end as a fricative, the fricative version of these ones are kind of the end part, because it ends as a fricative. But because we're not really changing much, the xi and the ji, qi, 
The ending part of these ones kind of sounds like these ones, obviously, because we're ending it as a fricative, and these are the fricatives. So that's kind of the, the deep relation between each of these, but it's important to emphasize that you do the stop part and that you aspirate them appropriately in order to distinguish them. Okay, so just going through them again, we have bilabial, labiodental, alveolar, velar, which is the soft palate, alveolopalatal, which is between the alveolar ridge and palatal region, Retroflex, which is the tongue curling back. And then we have alveolar again. And specifically in terms of modes of articulation, we have plausive. We have unaspirated and aspirated versions. And that goes for the affricates as well. We have the unaspirated and aspirated versions. And then in the nasal region, we have the, the, we have two different versions with, um, with bi, uh, bilabial and alveolar, um, creating two different nasal sounds. We have the fricatives, which are a lot of them. And then we have the one lateral. Okay, so that basically breaks down all the 21 cons consonants. A lot of these details aren't necessarily important to actively think about when you're speaking Chinese, obviously, but it's a good thing to kind of be familiar with in order to make sure that you're using your mouth properly when you're constructing these sounds, because in order to speak in a genuine manner, it's important that you actually concentrate very deeply on the way that you say these sounds. So keep it in mind. Um, make sure that you're practicing each of these letters. By no means is this anything that you should you definitely need to know, but you need to be able to pronounce them. And I hope that this helps kind of organize uh, the consonants in your head and kind of give you a little bit of insight into how these work um, and why the, the traditional ordering of each of the consonants is kind of in this manner because it's kind of organized based on how you form the sounds in your mouth. So that also is kind of a bit elegant. So I hope this kind of helped clear a little bit up and kind of gave you a little bit of insight. Uh, and I think, uh, I think it should have helped you kind of organize in your mouth a little better the way that you, um, you articulate the consonants. Okay? Thank you for watching.